Hi everyone, welcome to the Laser Channel where we learn, create, and share. My name is Greg and in today's video I am going to show you how to create your very own multi-layer project. This project is going to be designed entirely within Lightburn software. And I'm also going to show you a great spot to find free graphic assets. This video is being sponsored by the Creality Falcon 2 Laser Machine. Let's get started by going into the Lightburn software and start creating our multi-layer project. Inside Lightburn, let's take a look at a project that I already have completed. Doing a little bit of pre-explanation is going to make a lot of sense as we start our own project. We're going to see that I have three layers across the top, and three layers is just enough layers for me to demonstrate and show you a lot of really cool tools that you can take to make your very own project. These three layers, of course, will be stacked on top of one another and to help develop that sense of depth when looking at this project. Each layer, I make the, uh, the subject area, it gets smaller and smaller, further adding to that depth of field. I'll show you what I mean. When I highlight this top layer and I place it over the second layer, and I zoom in a little bit, we're gonna see that the second layer with this little bear cub, this outline ring gets a little bit smaller. And the same thing is going to be when I highlight these two layers and I place them over this third layer. We're going to see that that third layer, that that viewing area gets yet even smaller, adding to that depth of field. And I'll put all three of my tiles back. On the bottom, I have two more elements. One of them is simply just a square. This is going to be the back of the project. And off to the other side, I have this bordered frame, and this is going to serve two purposes for me. The first one is going to be, I'm going to use it as a frame for the very top layer. It's going to kind of dress up this project very nicely. The other thing is, in between each of the layers across the top, I am going to use this as a cutout for some spacers. Now this project doesn't need those spacers, there's nothing wrong with making a multi-layer project and just stacking the layers against one another. It's still very neat, but I want to go that extra step and place a cardboard spacer in between each layer. I'm going to get started by taking all of my design elements and I'm going to move them off to the side out of the work area. The first thing I'm going to draw is a perfect circle. I'm going to take the circle tool, press and hold the shift key to constrain that to a perfectly round circle. And I think I'll put that on layer two just so that it's easy to see. I'm going to zoom in and to help create this perspective, each copy of the circle that I make, I'm going to use the offset command to make the next circle a little bit smaller. And I'll do this as many times as I need. I'll select the offset command, making sure it's going inward. And I'm going to use an offset value of 0.1 inches. That looks good. And I'm going to select that inner circle and move that to the outside. And once again, I'll just repeat the process. Next, I'm going to draw a perfect square once again by holding that shift key keeps it at perfectly shaped square. I'm going to select that square and hit Control C to copy it and Control V to paste the copy and one more time and yet one more time after that. I'm going to take one of these squares and move it all the way down to the bottom and I'm going to zoom back in and place these other squares around the circles. And don't worry about getting it exactly centered up. We're going to do that in the very next step by highlighting our layer number one. And I'm going to go up to the top toolbar and use this bullseye to align both shapes to the center. And we'll see that they shift ever so slightly. And I'll do this for all my layers. That looks good, and now I need to add in some design elements. And for this project video, as we saw, I want to do a nice wooded scene with some type of wildlife in it. And for that, I'm going to go and get my graphic files from one of my favorite sources, and that is pixabay.com. 
Here, I did a search for tree silhouettes. I just made sure that I am selecting vectors for my image type. The reason why I like to use a vector image is not only can I engrave a vector image, I can cut that out without doing any additional work within Lightburn software. For the animals that I'm going to do, I simply typed in animal silhouette once again, making sure I'm searching for vector images. As we take a look around, we can pick from birds, cats, uh, dragons, witches, all kinds of things. Just know that when you're selecting images from Pixabay, these images, they of course are free, but they are for personal use. If you're looking to make projects for craft shows and art shows, I'd recommend contacting the artist of that graphic directly and let them know your intent to see if you can't get set up with the correct license. Back in Lightburn, I've already imported my graphic files. I have those placed off to the side. And the first set is a group of trees. Now I picked out trees that had some detail, but not so much detail that it's gonna take hours for the laser to cut those out. And when I zoom in on this first tree, when I click on one element, we're going to see that all the different elements of this tree are broken up. And I actually wanna keep this all grouped together because it's going to work better in the next couple of steps. Plus it's easier to move that graphic around. So as you've guessed it, I'm going to highlight this entire tree and navigate to the top and I'm going to group everything together. Now when I select that tree, I'm picking all the design elements within that. And I'll do that for any of these trees that I would like to use. I can pick this one and once again, I'll group all of that together. And now when I pick it, I have the entire tree just by itself. I'll select this tree and I'm going to drag it over by the work area and I'll get zoomed in a little bit better here. And this tree, I'm going to do two things. I'm going to shrink it down to something that matches about the size of the project. And I'll shrink that down a little bit more. And I'm also going to make sure that it is on the same layer, layer number two. When I'm placing the object, I'm also going to take in consideration the material that I'll be lasering this out. And today's project, I'm using some very thick cardstock. So these are going to be relatively small, so they're going to remain relatively rigid. Now, if I was making a very large project just out of regular construction paper, I would want to make sure that this tree overlaps the side quite a bit so it has a lot of support so it doesn't start bending over in time. But with the cardstock that I have, all I need to do is make sure that I've got the bottom planted within that circle and a couple elements on the side. And that looks good. And now this is where the magic is going to start. I'm going to be using the cutout tools here on the side and it is very important that I select one element of the design first and then the second element and that is going to determine what gets cut out and left behind. I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to select the circle first and I'm going to press and hold the shift key and select the tree second and now I'm going to use this cutout. When I click on that, we're going to see that everything that was sticking out of that circle got chopped off. And just that easy, layer number one is all complete. Layer number two, we're gonna be using some of the same concepts, but I'm gonna be adding a couple extra elements in there to really show you the versatility of the tools within Lightburn software. For the second layer, I want to have a little hill across the bottom of the scene before I place the animal on top of that. For this, I'll grab the circle tool and I'm going to just draw kind of an oval. That looks good. I'll make sure that my cursor is selected and I want to subtract this oval from the circle. So as you've guessed it, I'm going to highlight the circle first and then the object that I want to trim second and then I'm going to click on the appropriate tool off to the side here. And there we go, perfect. When I pan back over to the side, I'm gonna see that I have all these different animals. And I think for this one, I'm gonna grab the rabbit. So I'll grab that and place that over by my project area. 
get this rabbit shrunk down. Now, of course, each time I go a layer deep into this project, I'm gonna keep shrinking the design elements so it holds some element of that perspective and depth perception. That looks about the right size. I'm going to make sure that it intersects into my design element. That looks good. And I'm going to make sure that it is on the same design layer. And once again, I'll select the first element and then the second element that I want to trim. That looks good. And I'll clip that out. Perfect. So in that layer number two, we did two steps. We added in a landscape element and then another graphic element. For the third layer, I'm going to show you yet another technique for adding elements into this layer. For this, I'm going to add some nice soft rolling hills in the background, and that I'm going to grab the pencil tool. And we're going to notice that each time I go a layer deeper into the scene, I'm also starting to draw a little bit higher into that scene. For this pencil, I'm going to click once and then move my cursor inside. And then I'm going to click and hold, and I can move the mouse around and I can start to bend this line around. And I like that. And then I can release the mouse button and move the line and I can click and hold and I can continue to bend that line. Pretty cool trick. I'll just keep repeating this until I'm all the way through that circle. Once I'm outside, the key element here is I have to draw a loop all the way around to the very beginning of that line. This has to happen so that I can trim this design element that I just drew so that I can trim that from the circle. And I'll just continue this all the way around. And when I get up near the beginning here, it'll turn into a cross here. And for some reason, it's going back to a point way over there, but that doesn't matter. Once again, I'll click first on the circle and then press and hold the shift key on my design element to highlight that. And now I can trim that away. Perfect. And for I think the last element that I'd like to add to that, I'm going to grab this tree, get that close, and I'll switch that over to layer number two. And because we're getting deeper, of course, into our design elements here, I'm going to make this tree much shorter than the first tree that I made. Once again, as you've guessed it, helping to add that depth of field. And I'll shrink this down just a little bit more, making sure it clips the bottom and just the top a little bit. That way it's supported at both the bottom and the top so that tree doesn't start to lean over. That looks good. And as you've guessed it, I'll select the first design element and then press and hold the shift key. Select the tree, trim that out, perfect. One thing I like to do here is select each layer and I wanna group that layer all together and I'll do that for all three layers. And taking a look, I still have this nice square across the bottom here. This of course will be the backer for that final layer. I'm going to control C to copy that layer and control V to paste that. I'll place that off to the side here and this, again, I'm going to be using as a frame for that layer number one, and it's also going to be the spacer for in between each of the layers. And I'll be using the offset command this time. Instead of 0.1 inches, I'll use 0.2 inches, making sure it goes inward. That looks good. And I can highlight all of that. And once again, I'm going to group that together just to make it easier to move around the workspace if needed. With the last design element complete, the next step would be to switch over and start cutting out all my layers on the laser machine. Before I do that, I have a couple of tips for you. When I zoom in, we'll see that today's project, I used a circle in the middle with a square on the outside. The circle in the middle, there's nothing stopping me from using something like maybe an oval or a star shape or any other shape for that matter. And instead of a square outline, I could definitely use something like a rectangle. So this is a very adaptable project. The other tip that I have as I zoom back a little bit, if I am doing more than three layers and it starts getting a little complicated to keep track of what layer goes in what order, I can also take the, uh, the letter tool and in the corner, I can engrave what layer number 
each of these is making the assembly process really simplified. The next thing I'm going to do is get my machine set up for the project material. I'm also going to take the example that I just drew and I'm going to move that off to the side and I'm going to turn that output off. I'm going to take the original graphic that I drew, place that back in the work area, making sure that that layer is on and all the graphic elements off to the side, I'm also going to turn that off. When we zoom in, this is going to be what I'll be cutting out on my laser machine. There's a wide variety of materials that could be used for a project like this, such as eighth inch press board, poster board, or in my case today, I'm going to be using some very thick cardstock. And for the spacers in between each layer, I'm going to be recycling a box. This is a perfect way to make spacers for these multi-layer projects. The machine that I'm using for today's project is the Falcon 2 by Creality. This machine comes largely pre-assembled, going from box to power-up in about five minutes. This machine also features a powerful 22 watt laser module making quick work of today's project. Because I am doing some cutting, I do have the honeycomb that is also by Creality and I like this honeycomb because I can use my nice red magnets to place that down on the magnetic honeycomb, assuring that my project material doesn't shift around during the cutout. If you'd like to know more about the Creality Falcon 2 and the other lineup of accessories by Creality, I will have links in the video description. In Lightburn, I've also resized all of my layers to be about 5 inches square. I chose 5 inches square because I can fit two layers per piece of cardstock. We'll also see that the layers that I'm not cutting out, I've placed off to the side and I'm going to select those and just for now, I'm going to put those on a tool layer because a tool layer will not engrave or cut. From here, I can start placing my material inside of the machine, put the exhaust hood over the top, cue in some nice relaxing music, and I'll see you in a short while. All of my layers have been cut out and they turned out absolutely perfect. We also see that around all the cut lines, there's a faint line of charring. And I purposely left that in there because I'm going to be sealing that char in with some spray polyurethane. Personally, I really like these faint lines of charring because it really makes these different layers really pop out. All the design elements cut out absolutely perfectly. The only thing left to do is to glue them together with some Gorilla Super Glue or an Elmer's glue stick. Once the glue is dried on my project, I finish the outside edge with some black tape I had around the shop. Some alternative options would be using some wood veneering or even some more cardstock material. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider giving it a like, subscribe to the channel, or ring that notification bell. I would love to see what your project looks like. Post a picture of it on the Laser Channel Facebook page. I'll have a link to that down below in the video description. Until next time, learn, create, and share.